Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. This is part two of two American IPAs brewed back to back. Applies to everybody brewing beer out there, especially if you like IPAs. But one of the special reasons we did this was we wanted to test the Anvil Small Batch Adapter, which is just a ring. It helps to kind of reduce the liquid flowing through the sides where the additional holes are. The theory there is it's forcing the liquid through the mash all the way and not allowing it to go out the sides. Increasing efficiencies, which if you watched video one, if you're a subscriber, you probably did, you'll know it had an impact. Your mileage may vary, but if you're a subscriber, you would know. Please do me a favor, when you get a chance, hit subscribe, smash it, hit it, whatever. Hit the like, share, share, share. Also, if we link anything down below and you're familiar with the company and you like to buy from them anyways, feel free to click on the link to go buy it. Throws a little chump change our way on most links, not all links. Sometimes I link to things that we don't have an affiliate with just because I want to make sure you know where to get it. That little bit of chump change helps to cover some of the expenses, which is greatly appreciated. Even if you don't watch the videos regularly, hit subscribe. Thank you beyond all measure. And occasionally, if you get bored, you can look over and go, oh, hey, he's got three videos I haven't seen. Let me look and see if any of them apply to me or something I'm interested in watching right now. There's a lot of people I subscribe to and I may not watch all their videos right away. I watch them from time to time. Other ones I watch the minute they come out. It just depends upon what my mood is and what I'm looking to watch at that time or who or what it's about. So let's get on with the video. As you are aware, if you watched the first video, we had a 4% difference in efficiency. We were at 72% over here and 76%. Your mileage may vary based on grain, crush. Our crush was the same, our pH, I have no clue, but we landed it. Um, temperature was off a little, so there may have been a two hundredths of a point if I adjust for the temperature, but you're talking, it was so close, it would have been minor. Over here, we have one problem though, is I was thinking eight ounces of acid malt, and for some reason I hadn't really drank much of my coffee that morning, I don't know, I'm giving excuses. But needless to say, instead of doing four ounces and four ounces like I would if I wanted to add that, I put eight and eight and we ended up at around 4.96, I believe it was, somewhere around there. Yeah, mash, and that was about 15 minutes in, 10 to 15 minutes. You really wanna be between 5.6 and 5.2 on your pH and you wanna always recalibrate and recalibrate, which I did that day. So I'm pretty confident it was crazy low. I read that some of the quake yeast, which is all we used here, do not like a very acidic wort. So there is a possibility due to that acidity, we kept it from fermenting all the way through. Over here, we threw Imperial, we were at 1.060 and we ended at 1.012. According to Beersmith and Imperial's profile, we should have been at 1.008. So we missed it by four points. I'm okay with that. It's sitting at 6.4%. It'll still be a great beer. Our efficiency was a point higher than we expected not too worried. Over here, I'm getting a little bubbles, although I got shaken up a little moving from the fermenter out here. Yes, I don't leave these out in the light all day. And if I do leave them, I cover them all up. But we started at 1.057. We got down to about 1.045 or 43. And Farm Fram Garden, which is what we pitched over here, just stopped. And I don't mean it slowed down, it just stopped. I don't know if it was contaminated. I don't, I really hope not. Or it just didn't like the acidity. So I'd heard great things about Ebb Garden. I, the only reason I pitched from Garden is it sounded good and no one had told me anything about it. So I wanted to try it out. So I pitched Ebb Garden. As you know, I always do multiple yeast. So I had a couple that I had made that day when I made this one and they were in the fridge. I just dumped a little extra liquid out, dumped the yeast in and rock and rolled. We got down to 1.013. The expectation with Fram Garden and Ebb Garden, I put it about the same for the profile because they weren't in Beersmith the way I needed them, um, should have been 1.007. So we're about six points off there instead of four over here. It is still bubbling. I might get another point. I don't expect much more than another point at most, but we're sitting at 5.8. That's still a good ABV for an American IPA, 6.4 over here. It will, both will be a hint sweeter or not as dry, um, 5.12 or 1.012 and 1.013, kind of on the drier side for some beers. Yeah, I like it crazy drier. 1.007 would have been amazing. So we'll see how that comes out. I want you to see the big thing too is color. Although different yeasts and different malts will affect color, the malts were identical. The yeasts were different. This one's much darker. 
there is a main reason that I know, and this may stay lighter, it may get a little darker, I don't know. We just don't at this moment. Point, most of the yeast has fallen out of suspension over here. So this is all wart. So if I took this, put it in a glass, held it up, I'd be able to see through it much better than over here. Over here, I'm getting much more refracted or reflected light. And I'm not a scientist. If you are, you can tell me which it really is or if it's a little bit of both. But the yeast is still in suspension, quite a bit of it actually. And I can see from the yeast cakes on the bottom, it's a little higher over here, not quite as low, but that really doesn't mean anything. Some go nuts and some don't. So as the yeast falls out of suspension, which it may not completely fall out of suspension, the color may darken a little. It may not. I'm not too worried. I am considering trying to clarify these a little bit, not going nuts, just to get a little bit more of that yeast out of there. And there's a little bubble. But let's go on. We're going to take two ounces of Idaho Gym, which is what we put in here. The yeast were different and the hops were different. We're going to put two ounces of Idaho Gym in a keg, purge it, dry hop it, and then we'll put two ounces of Equinot, or Equinot, which is the hops we decided, and we'll move that over and dry hop it. And I may or may not move that little tilt. I know it's in there somewhere. There it is. It's got yeast poop on top, so eh, may have to clean it, which I really don't want to be playing around with it and then sticking it back into the beer. So I'll make that call at the last minute, but right now the occasional bubble, I'm leaning towards putting it in there. So let's get dry hopping. Okay, we're gonna move the American IPA with Idaho Gym. As I drop and who knows what I drop and possibly break. We'll have to clean that. Okay, we got two ounces. Now, change my mind again, I do it a lot. Two and a half ounces of Idaho Gym. And this has been sterilized with star sand and water. Dropped a few of the little hop pellets, so we'll drop them in here. This is all sitting on a plate because it has been soaked in star sand and lightly rinsed. The string has not been rinsed at all. Minimize touching, even though my hands are still a little damp. Okay, it's two and a half ounces of Idaho Gym. Get a seal on that. We got the air part, pop this open, grab the longest hose I have available. <laughs> I already purged it earlier, so it should be good, especially since CO2 is a little heavier than oxygen. We'll pop this off. Smells nice. Something I do, I just have to smell it, make sure it smells good. If I smell something funky, I'm gonna stop. So, I've already run water through this. This was a little tight. Did the pumpkin earlier. If you're subscribing, you saw that we did the pumpkin transfer already. Move this over here. Drop it on in. There we go. Take a little prime for some reason. Put that right here. Someday we'll grow a third arm. It'll make life a lot easier. It's like keg farting. Entertaining if you want to be entertained. And there we go. We're gonna rock and roll. This will take a minute, so we'll speed it up. And there we go, there's one. Okay, we'll purge the CO2 on that. We'll knock out the second one and we'll rock and roll. Again. Time to transfer the Equinot IPA with Ebb Garden, even though we had used, originally used Fram Garden as far as Quake Yeast, if I can say that right. Keep dropping these damn hot pellets. So we may be a hair below 2.5. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're about on. I dropped one little tiny one. Not too concerned. If you saw earlier, I dropped it. Yeah, I had to go restart sand it and re-clean it. It was fun. Okay, drop that one out. I'm just thinking I need to label these two kegs so I know which one's which. 
This has dropped two points today, so we're down at two, one oh, point zero zero point zero one one. There we go. Purge the keg. We just had it open. Four. There we go. Pop this off. concern of infection, should we say? Okay, I'm not sure. We'll find out once we get the taste test it. Really suck if that's the issue. stronger than left. Okay, here we go. Grab the little yeast, a little air. It's not a big deal. We'll purge it out. We'll let this sit for about a week and we'll go from there. And it looks like we're dripping a little, so we'll clean that up. I don't know if you noticed, but I wrote on here with Sharpie. Dry erase will take it right off. And generic dry erase. Don't even have to buy a big brain on this. Okay, we'll let this dry hop for a week. Okay, this is the two IPAs that we did. I'm just simply transferring the Idaho Gym version of the IPA over to here. Change things up a little bit. Normally I use this, which is from Cakeland and everything, but the problem with this is it's going to let the air go out and drop the PSI to, in the keg where we're moving it to, to zero. I don't want that. I have this from Kegland and I have this, which is quite nice for stainless steel disconnect and everything. Didn't need this, but I figured I would let me know. What I'm going to do, it's called a Spundit 2.0 Swiss Army Spunding Valve. A little overkill, but it's okay. What I'm doing is because this is sitting at seven PSI because I let it finish doing additional fermentation in there, I'm gonna move it over to here. I don't really wanna lose that PSI, but if I go from seven PSI to zero PSI, I'm gonna get a little foam and I may end up with some foam coming out of the top. I don't want that. So instead, I'm gonna leave this at five PSI, which is where I have it set right now after adding the CO2 to it. This is sitting at seven. I'll put 10 pounds of pressure on here, which is about three over, two under over here. It'll move the actual beer, which is already kind of pre-carbonated, which is a bonus. Um, not quite where we want it. We need about three more PSI, but it'll be easy. We're gonna move it over and that'll keep the foaming down. A little trick when moving it, you don't wanna go from something five or better to zero, you can get a lot of foam, especially if you're up closer to 10. Seven is pretty high. So simply gonna put this on here. <clears throat> Grab our standard operating procedure. Snap this bad boy on here. <clears throat> there we go. And let's move this over just a bit so we can get it over here and get this right link. Okay, after we do the Idaho Gym, we'll move on and we'll do the Equina. If I can even pronounce that word. <clears throat> there we go. And, yep, and you saw a little bit of foam come through. Our PSI should go up. We're sitting just a hair under five, actually. But that's fine. And this will start bubbling as we start moving more. So it's going to move. It's going to take a long time. So we'll go a little fast forward. So we'll resume here shortly. Okay, that was a 
ungodly painful and slow, but we'll keep the carbonation at least five, probably closer to six PSI. So we only lost maybe, maybe two, maybe one if we're lucky. We'll cold crash that. I did put a half a teaspoon of gelatin in a quarter cup of every 15 seconds for 45 seconds until it was boiling as far as the water or close to boiling. So it was clarified and then I put it in there. We're getting ready to do the next one. That was the Idaho Gym. We'll do the Equinot, Equinot, if I can say that correctly. Next, I'm gonna go rinse all this out. Same thing, different can. This is the Equinot. It's sitting at about four to five PSI versus the seven the previous one was sitting at. There was a little bit of a foam. Put this on a 10. This should start going up. I ran out of water over here because I was cleaning it with flying. I just put star sand in here. I always have the star sand here, so I just filled it with star sand. Still learning how to use the device. I already purged the keg, but I purged most of the air out too. We had bubble, a little too much bubble. Welcome to, welcome to star sand and air. There we go, we'll just catch the bubbles. If anything, it's entertaining. your entertainment. This is my entertainment. Okay, that's it. We're done. This is the Equinot. I'm gonna move that over. There we go. And the backside, it's snug. And I'll drop it on in here, get it chilled out. We also added a half a tablespoon, or teaspoon, sorry. Half a teaspoon of gelatin with a quarter cup of warmed water, 15 seconds, three times until it dissolved in the microwave, stirred it up, slapped it in. We're gonna throw that in the keg. If I have a problem with the quake yeast, I'm gonna get really upset. Sitting at five PSI, we'll crank it up to 30 PSI, see if we can't get it carbonated. It is uh, late night on a Tuesday. I'm gonna hopefully have it carbonated by the weekend so we can finish up. Okay, you saw us transfer both of the IPAs from the carboys to the kegs, dry hopped them, moved them again to another keg, carbonated them. The Idaho gym, I took a, some of the nasty, you know, pulled some of that off there. I uh, think it needs a little more carbonation, but I think it's good enough to have taste test. The Equinot, definitely <laughs> carbonated. Might need to pull it back a little bit. Just a reminder, um, they were both identical but we had a slightly higher gravity on one due to a better brew house efficiency using the anvil adapter. And that was the Idaho gym. And from a 1.059 final gravity, 0.059, almost five, but the 1.012 using Imperial A44 yeast, which is a blend of like three different quake yeasts. We ended up at a 6.2% ABV. I thought it was gonna be a little higher. I was expecting a much lower final gravity, but I'm good with that. Equinot, we actually started at 1.057, but we finished at a slightly lower gravity of 1.011. I started with Fram Garden, but for some reason, Fram Garden knocked it down. I want to say it was to 1.04 or something, but it didn't go very far and then it just kind of stalled. So I pitched Ebb Garden over that and it just kicked back on and resumed. And we ended up at 6.1. So what I'm going to do is I'll pull the Idaho Gym and the Brews and Ales mug. Okay, I said it needed some more carbonation, but it's looking pretty good now. Definitely not clear yet, but I'm kind of, how do you say, impatient. So that's the Imperial or the Idaho Gym. 
with the Equinox, which I said was overcarbonated. Yeah, it's coming down. I'm gonna bleed it out a little more. Okay, they were both dry hopped with different hops too. And like I said, the color. It's still a little hazy. I'll go for some clarifying. If I get a lot of clarification, maybe I'll post another video showing it, but flavor is king. The one with the Fram Garden and Ebb Garden, it's got a lot of estuary, a lot of, a lot of smell. I know they say they're not, but I smell. Probably smell part of the dry hops too. But I definitely smell the yeast. It's got a nice yeasty smell to it, which nice or not nice based on how you look at it. The Imperial A44, I can smell the dry hops, but it's very clean. Lots of tropical flavor, definitely a pineapple bomb. You got a ton of pineapple in there. Not real great with the tra tropical flavors, but I could see a few other types of tropical flavors like papaya, um, definitely had a citrus, citrus, but the pineapple is just overwhelming. I mean, it's got a lot, a lot of pineapple, a little passion fruit maybe, definitely a little passion fruit. I got that dry aftertaste with the kind of sweet, like if you've ever eaten passion fruit or drank passion fruit juice, get that papery aftertaste, which I actually like, even though I don't like the aftertaste, I like the fruit, so I'm good with it. Easy drinking. Even though the carbonation was high on there, it just doesn't feel quite as carbonated as I'm drinking it. Okay, I can clear the palate even though I didn't get any crackers. A little Star Fox up for anybody, Nintendo. A little after my time, but that's okay, my kids enjoyed it. I like the smell, the Equinot with the Fram Garden and Ebb Garden. Just got, kind of reminds me of the Belgians a little more. I, I know it sounds weird, we're talking about Norwegian yeast, but mm, hey, it is what it is. It's got a bit more bite to it. I can taste the pineapple, but more the outer, near the rind. Well, this is more like the pineapple juice. This is more of the rind. Definitely taste some other, definitely a little more citrus over here. Either way, they're both very drinkable. Um, the 6.1 actually tastes like it's a little higher ABV than the 6. Point, no, 6. Point, yeah, 6.1 tastes higher than the 6.2. Which is kind of weird, but if you're so close, you wouldn't be able to tell them apart. I don't know which one I'm going to drink the most of. I do find the one with the Imperial a little smoother. You gotta like pineapple. It's got a lot of pineapple. A lot of pineapple. This has just got a lot of other things going on, and they're all good. It's just, I think, the yeast and the smell and the even the taste of the yeast is overpowering some of the hops, but the hops are still coming through, just not as strong as they are over here on the Imperial side. So, two great beers. Uh, gelatin's only been in there for a few days, so it's gonna take a little longer to clarify it. I did get a ton of gunk out of there on the first pull, which was great, so. Thank you again, from Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, subscribe, like, and if you don't subscribe, you might miss out. We have a contest coming up. I'm working to finish that up as fast as I can. And I heard some good things about this. I'm more of an all grain brewer, but I'm willing to try a little dry or a little liquid extract brewing just to see how it is. The stuff's been getting really good reviews. And in my opinion, I can do a better beer with all grain, but I can also mess up a beer better with all grain. So to each their own and everybody's gotta start somewhere, but I'm always curious. So this brew firm has been getting lots of uh, good feedback. I wanted to try their IPA, but they had a deal where buy one, get one. So I got the Sacred Saison and I got the Beastly Belge, which I've looked that up. I, basically just like a house Belgian ale, more of like usually an amber or a mild ale. It comes with T58 yeast, which was, or at least something that sounded like T58. I won't say it was, but it sounded like it because it's their yeast. And this one says it can get down to 1.000 final gravity on the fermentation, which was quite impressive. And I believe this one makes about three gallons and this one makes about three and a half, almost four. Yeah, we'll try them out. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. And thank you again for all the great support.